So what should I eat now? Um, my daughter, well, it's a better situation that my daughter stays here with my mom. And, um, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's a better situation, so they wanted to see her too. So I drove all the way from where well, we were at the playground all the way to, on the east side of Los Angeles. So there is some traffic. And um, on the way back, I should be fine right now. But I'm not sure what I should eat because I, mean, I can go home and eat a sandwich. I think I'll just do that. I think I just kind of stick with the, the food that I bought, you know. The sandwich stuff. The uh, Oh, is that a possum? Did I just see a possum all by? I think I did because if it was a cat, I don't think it would have uh, looked like a possum. There's possums by my mom's, but I'm sure. Uh, sorry, it's dark, guys. I'm sorry. I know. I didn't turn the light on. Sorry, it's really dark. But um, my kid um, she fell asleep on her way over here. And like, I'm not gonna do that no more. I'm not gonna give her the phone and put headphones on her and let her just watch the TV. Like I'd rather her talk to me or talk to herself or like you know, because I had been kind of just putting the headphones on her. I even asked her when we left. She's like, I don't want the headphones. I'm like, you good. So I was holding her hand, I kind of just made up a song and like, she was already falling asleep. Not that the song put her to sleep, but I like to sing to her a little bit. Just like lullaby tone, I guess. But so, but right now we got here kind of quick, faster than I thought. It's like what, 6.30? I told, I told my sister 7.30 and she was in the shower, but um, so she was sleeping and then I, I put, picked her on my shoulder and when she's tired, she'll rest. And then I put uh, the blanket over her. But she seen where she was at. Like, she looked at the house and she, like, took a double look. At like, Grandma's house. And then she was, my sister came out. She was fully up now. She wanted to walk. And then, like, she hugged my sister. And I told my sister my daughter's breath smells kind of funny, too. So, uh, <laughs> to just brush her teeth if she needs it. Dude, it's totally, how's it go from light to totally dark? But, um, I'll leave it like this. But, so, um. Yeah, we had an awesome day. I didn't really record over there. Um, it was cool. There was um, a lot of people showed up today. There was this like this cool little white white kid. It was super dope. It was like a crazy day, you know. Um, so it was a super dope day. Um, there was like this gentleman. He was being like he was. Alan was playing with his two little kids. I think there were his grandkids. Now that I think about it, she was playing with his two little grandkids, and he was pretending with them like you know and then he seen me watching my kids so he's like everybody you know we're, we're humans and we're kind of animals so we figure things out and like they're like okay that's his kid he keeps watching her but he was being like pretending to be an alien and like she loved it and he was like oh your daughter he compliment you know everybody compliments the kids i guess or whatever and um um so there's a little bit of light right here on this street so um you know how they compliment your kids and whatnot and so i'm at the park okay you know and um, like he had a little, a little, a little. Like, I guess when they first got there, we kind of like, Alan wanted to go up to the workout machines, and the, and the little kid who was Caucasian, little white kid, he had a, he was a cool kid. He was talking with Alan. He's super talkative. He was talking to me, and I'm, I'm like interacting back with him, and he just very impressionable, very like, you know, he just seemed like, you know, I was being nice to him. You know, I was like trying to show him I was working out as well. And then there was a, like a little African American kid. He, but he was older maybe like maybe eight or nine Alan got hurt and he like sat her down and like was nice to her and like it was just super cool he was I shook, even shook his hand like dude you're being so sweet to my kid like he had such good manners man and um so anyway so they're still playing I, I go back to where I'm sitting I'm just keeping an eye on my kid from a distance and all of a sudden the little the little the little Caucasian kid his name's Lucian, L-U-C-I-A-N. I'm assuming that's how you spell Lucian. So, and then his his brother's name is um, fuck, what's his name? Sorin, like Sorin, I guess Sorin. And um, so the younger brother's name is Sorin, the older brother's Lucian, and then I guess that's her grandpa. And these kids are probably like, I think Lucian's probably like six, maybe, and the younger kid is like four or five, but maybe Lucian's maybe might be seven, but. It started messing with the sprinkler and the grandpa wasn't tripping and I really wasn't tripping about Halloween either, but 
but uh, Lucian was kind of going out of control. He was like wetting everybody, even trying to get me with the sprinkler. He even he even turned the sprinkler where it was like wetting the the, the uh, benches. And then his grandpa like, I don't judge it, like you know. And I wasn't gonna tell the kids stop, don't do this, but I was just gonna like laugh with him and joke with him when he was wetting me. So um um, um what was I gonna say? Yeah, so it, it was um. It was pretty funny. I mean, oh, his grandpa got up and he pretty much told him, "Hey, no!" And then Lucian, Lucian tried to act all like scared, like. But I just think he, Lucian doesn't listen very well. But, but you know, they'll learn, I guess. And the grandpa was just cool, 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 like cool guy, you know. And um, I was just playing. I was playing swords with Lucian because he was like, his younger brother was like, kind of like you know not as strong, and Lucian had more energy. And like the younger brother was just kind of following what his older brother was doing, and he he was getting happy when I would play with him, like. You know, they're just sweet kids, you know, they're just children, so that was cool. And then like the the grandfather, he was like I guess he just tried to strike conversation when it was time to leave, because they were literally with me on where I was hanging out at, like playing with swords. And then um so he's like he's like um what did he say? Oh it looks like you're Ah, oh, I gotta turn this thing on. He's like, it looks like you're ready for a son, and I'm like, uh son? Uh not really. And then like and then he's like, I was like, I got, you know, I just had my one daughter. You're like, pretty much in, insinuating, like, that's kind of enough right now. Just because my situation that I'm in, like, I ain't trying to, like, just jump into something. I'm more, like, trying to date and, like, really, like, date a few women and, like, see if they're the one. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not even financially stable to even be holding down a, a woman. Like, like I said, it's probably cheaper to date around because it's just a date and you're just paying for that. Like, you get with the girl, she wants a house, she wants all that, you know? And I can't really give them that, so. But it's cool, man. It's interesting there. There's a lot of women at the park. You know, I don't know if they're single, but. Uh, just, it just like, there's some instances where they're kind of, like, kind of interested, you know. But, like I said, I just stick to myself. Um, anybody's kid tries to talk to me or needs my help, I'll help them, you know. Like, I'm not going to leave. Like, if I see a kid climbing, he, like, little baby or little toddler looks a little, like, you know, shaky. Then I'm going to, I'm going to obviously try to catch it or. You know, I'm not just gonna leave somebody's kid like that, like you know what I'm saying. But you know, I got, these are things I gotta work through. Cause I got tattoos, you know. Like they see that, like I kind of let my daughter try to do her own thing and try to figure it out. You know, I'm not over here trying to like nitpick everything. She did take one of the kids' um soccer balls, and the little girl started crying. And the mom was, I don't know if it was the mom, but she was understanding because like yeah, they're just kids, you know. Like they'll learn. Like I just, I try to correct my daughter. And I told my daughter like one day someone's gonna take something from you. You're not gonna like it, you know. And that's just how they're gonna learn. And I'd rather my daughter learn that in elementary and junior high than be out in the street, you know, not knowing and then making mistakes and then, you know, you know, people don't care about you. If they ain't your family. They don't care about you. Even your own family do you wrong if if if, if you. Or a person that's scandalous and stuff, but I don't know. But yeah, and then like, like I said, I'm here for my kid. I'm I, hopefully, God willing, you know, I want to be here for my kid. And I just want you to know that, Halloween, you're only two and a half right now, and you're very young. You know, people compliment you that you climb a lot, and you're very, you know, and you talk. She's like very talkative and stuff. But Halloween does this thing where she says shh, shh, she goes, shh, 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 like quick. She's like shh, shh, like I'm not listening. Shh, shh, quiet, quiet. And then even like when she was really sad because she fell a couple times, which I got to tell my sister, I forgot to tell my sister to check her knee because she fell a couple times over there at the park. And then um, not like from too high or whatever, but she, she she's um, having her, she's even just being a kid going through it. And, um, and I'm, 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 so I love it, man. I love this. I like, I love it. I love going to that park. I love taking her to the park. I like that park because I'm comfortable there and it's very diverse and it's in an area where people were like, like, I don't know, they just... They're good people, you know? And they're not, like, looking and trying to... There's no, nobody there that has an ignorant mind that's, like, you know, like, who's that guy, you know? Like, there, there ain't nobody claiming that fucking park, you know what I mean? There's just a park people go to, and, like, there's people there doing pull-ups and doing karate and take their dogs there. It's, like, I like it, you know? Everybody's getting to know me and stuff, so... In a sense, like, though, that guy's... That's his daughter, you know? But, um... Yeah, just things Ellen has to work on. And it hurts me, you know, it hurts me. I know that she has some anger because I'm not there all the time. And I know, she's just a kid, but I know she probably wakes up some days and wants me, you know. 
probably be some day she starts crying in the other room and her mom, I don't know where her mom's at. I don't know if she goes and comforts her. I don't know. I mean, she might just let her cry. She might just let her cry and she probably wishes I was there, you know, so. Yeah. I'm a sensitive dude, man. And like, I even like, there was a, she had hurt herself and I was on that workout machine. Like I, I watch her from a good distance, but like, you know, I keep my eye on her and um, the ladies waved me down and my daughter was crying. That's when, that's when that uh, young, you know, the young kid, he sat her down. He's like, it's okay, sit right here. Like, he was being so kind and so patient, so sweet. Like, he even he even had more of like a, of, a, of a knowing of what to do than I did. Like, I always cared about people, what they, what they think about me, the, the, my parenting skills. Like, all that is, is like deterring me from just loving my kid and like hoping that she's okay. Like, I'm worrying about. So I, I, I just try to pick her up and try to like go to the corner and try to figure it out so no one can hear me how I raise my kid or like. And I'm not even gonna do it in a fucked up way, but but when I said she like didn't want to, she was trying to get out of my arms. Like leave me alone. Like she, like she was pretty pretty upset and um, hurt and um, and I felt vulnerable. You know, I felt kind of like, like you know, I just I just then I kind of teared up a little bit. You know, but I had my mask on so nobody could see me. Like my mask was absorbing my fucking tears. I just kind of like that. But she went back. She went back to go play. Like a tough little girl. She went back to go play. But I'm gonna tell my my mom and my sister about her knee. So yeah, that was our day. We went to the park. I, like I said, I didn't film it. Um, Ellen had a great day. She did. She she had fun. I had those those cool little boys I met. And then there was this dude, this solid like this solid little. He was African American little boy. I don't know how old he was, but dude, dude had like dude he he had cleats. He had cleats. So I don't know. He could have been like 11 or 12. But he came when it was already dark. Me and Alan were still there. Like, she was eating some watermelon and, like, um. So he, he rode his bike and then he sat right there. At first, I thought it was a kid bringing, like, to eat at the, at the, at the, uh, eat at the table, at the lunch tables. And, um. But no, I guess he had his pair of cleats in his hands. So he put his cleats on and I told him, hey, bro, um, you playing by yourself? He's like, yeah. I told him, hey, man, um, if you come here on time, like, I'm here, like, I don't come here all the time, but sometimes I come, like, at, you know, 2 o'clock, you know, I come at 2 o'clock, and I'm here till it gets dark, like, if you come before it gets dark, we could play, because there's no lights right there, and, um, and we, sure enough, we were, we threw some routes, but I tell you, this little kid, he's strong, he looks strong, he has, like, a big neck, he's not that tall, but he, he, He's, and he catches the ball, you know. It was too dark, kind of, but we, we played. I just told him, hey, bro, hope to see you again. I love that, man. I play, I've play. i been playing football with my nephew, playing catch with him. I can help the kid out when, we, when I have my opportunities with my kid to go there. The kid looked like, you know, he had the want to do it. He put his cleats on. He went out there by himself. And even when I was leaving, he started throwing the ball, like, in the circle, like the entrance way of, like, you know, when he, you know, the jungle gym, when he climb up and he, you finally climb up the ladder and you the you know, entrance way. This place has like little little tunnels for the kids. So he started throwing the ball in there like for his accuracy. So and he was even playing with a, a pretty fat football. It was like uh, high school size, college football size. Like they're more round than the pros, I think. They're like a, more like a fatter ball. And it was like broken in the ball. Like this is a sick ball. It didn't have that much air in it. And uh, so we started tossing it around. Then Alan wanted the ball. And I was like, no, Alan. And I was like, let's let her cry. The kid's nickname is D. I think it's Demarius. That's his, that's his name. He's like, I was like, do you have a nickname? Anybody, like, family call you something? He's like, call me D. I'm like, for sure. <laughs> and, um, so it was a dope day, man. It was a really cool day. I got some, they have this leg machine there. I did, I tried to do some pull-ups, but I was still pretty sore from yesterday. <laughs> and, um, it was cool, man. I got there, I was pretty stoned. And um, I even parked kind of far that way we could like walk up to the park. Cause, uh, cause when I was stoned, I was like, man, maybe I'm fucking up these people's vibe. Maybe when I get there, they're always like on edge about me, or they're always too worried. Like, what am I thinking, or what am I doing? Or like, I don't want to like, I don't want to be a burden to anybody. But who knows what other people are thinking? I, I'm just going in my mind. I'm just, I just know what I know. You know what I'm saying? So, other than that, like it, people there are pretty cool, man. The ladies and. Everybody gets along. There's very diverse: Hispanic, African American, um, white American. Um, 
And even though some lady said ciao when she left, ciao when she left. She's like, oh, your daughter, she's so cool. And as soon as, like, Alan was like, shh. <laughs> I'm like, dude, my daughter's, I know she needs to learn. Like, I'm not worried about her being cool. Like, I need her to be respectful, you know? But, um, yeah. I just want to say, man, if you have a baby mama and you guys are still together or she's able to, or is telling you we're, we're still working on it, like, make the most of it, bro. The only thing you just got to do is not fight, bro. Just be quiet, bro. Just shut up, bro. Be quiet. Now, don't disrespect her. Like, that's all you got to do, man. Because it's better to, it's it, it's better for you, for your health to keep your family than to not have your family. It's one of the worst feelings. It's one of the worst feelings. And um, the world doesn't care, bro. The world don't care, man. The world moves on. So you're going to have to move on. And you're going to have to move on not being able to see your family all the time. And if you're the man, the woman has a lot of the power. So I, I've had to accept it. And it may seem like I'm going to take it with stride and like it's easy, but it's not. Like I said, people don't care. They're going to move on with their life. There's rules to this game. If we ain't together, they don't give a fuck about your feelings. They don't mean nothing. They don't mean nothing. There's just, there's just imaginary acceptance. Like, okay, you're with me. We're together. Or we're not together. It don't matter if it's a second later after saying we're not together no more. That's the agreement. They could go fuck, and it seems right. You know? Sorry for cussing, but... So I'm just saying, like, I can't shit on nobody. I'm just going to say for anybody out here that watching, don't lose your family, bro. You know? Make it work. If it's something still going, if, if it's, things are really bad right now, but you're still together, maybe you guys need space, bro. Create some space. Build appreciation again. Miss that person again. Get some space, bro. I should have got some space. Not even space together. Like, go to the beach. Go for a walk. Go for a picnic. Create space together. Create space where you know, go go out, go have fun, go go do something, go do something for yourself. Those are spaces that you're creating that are positive. And like I said, it's it's it's. I don't know, I don't know, but it's um it's not easy. That's for sure. So you gotta create space, man. You gotta create space. I don't know why I have what I have. I don't know why I have this truck. I don't know why I have somewhere to stay where I'm staying. I don't know why I was able to get unemployment. And so I know I want to appreciate it because right now it's good, but I have no idea. I'm going to be on my hands and knees again like a sad puppy dog when the money runs out. But I'm trying my best just to focus on my kids, spend as much time as I can with them right now, and see what happens. Because, um, I don't know. I'm not lonely, bro. I'm not lonely. Or maybe I am, but I'm good now. Like I'm tired of just. I'm tired of not being. Uh, I'm tired of um, flipping out. I'm tired of uh, effing things up. Then I gotta feel like crap after. Then I gotta clean it up. You know what I'm saying? I won't feel like that no more. But I do need a lot of work in learning how to trust people. And then learning how to just. kind of understand these defense mechanisms that I use in life and just kind of like be long suffering like just take it take whatever the world offers knowing that God offers something better you know so I'll, I'll take this judgment from people I'll take you know the petty little BS people try to throw at you like I'll take this because it's just all from the world like I'll take it like I'll, I'll, I guess it's just it's, it's things that I committed as a kid that I should have known better. I didn't. But then now I guess I, you know, fuck that. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say karma, karma. Like, okay, they came. Now I got to just go. Now I just got to go do what I got to do. Whatever that means. I, I got to just, I am. I'm going for my runs. Like, I enjoy it. It's not easy, but it's something I enjoy. Like, I'm smoking my bud to feel better. It's something I enjoy. I do my music because it's something I enjoy. You know, I go hang out with my daughter because it's something I enjoy and it's my job and, and I know it's going to benefit her so much. You know, I'm trying to do the best I can with what I know. Like, you know, like, I never knew how to be happy, you know what I'm saying? And, like, 
I never knew how to be happy. So how could I make someone else happy? That's why every relationship ends the same. You know, so I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. I'm good. I'm good. My daughter, she's not like she um I have her back to the fullest, man. I have my daughter's back to the fullest and um I care for her and um I'm glad she's getting to go to the playground and play and be a kid and you know, she climbs. She climbs something today that she's never climbed before. You know, and she's learning from other kids. She's challenging herself, and these other kids challenge herself. She's she's down, you know. And um, yeah. So, just take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. Go for runs and things like that, and um. I don't know, there's a lot of cars here, so I guess they, they work at night and stuff, but. So anyway, I'm gonna, let me come back right now. I'm gonna text my sister about my daughter's leg and I'll come back to y'all. I look scary at dark, huh? All right, anyway, peace.